What f***ing literal Bible dinosaurs walking the earth 6,000 years ago is this person talking about? I'm Tommy Vitor. I used to work in the Obama White House, and today we're getting red-pilled by Republicans bootlicking Vladimir Putin. Take the red pill. Are you familiar with the phrase bootlicking, first off? Yeah, it's, it's um PG synonym for ass kissing. It does feel accurate too. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Since the day that Donald Trump became president, Democrats in Washington have told you you have a patriotic duty to hate Vladimir Putin. It's not a suggestion, it's a mandate. What? When did, when did we say that? No one said that. Anything less than hatred for Putin is treason. <laughs> He's so, like, it's got to be absurd, right? Many Americans have obeyed this directive. They now dutifully hate Vladimir Putin. Maybe you're one of them. Hating Putin has become the central purpose of America's foreign policy. It's the main thing that we talk about. I do like that he, that he tells his audience, if you happen to hate this guy, it's because you're brainwashed by Democrats. You, you, can't, you can't dislike a man who murders his political opponents and is a right-wing totalitarian leader invading a country at the moment. You, uh, it's got to be because Joe Biden told you to. Got it. Very soon, that hatred of Vladimir Putin could bring the United States into a conflict in Eastern Europe. Before that happens, it might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Has he shipped every middle-class job in my town to Russia? Did he manufacture a worldwide pandemic that wrecked my business and kept me indoors for two years? Is he teaching my children to embrace racial discrimination? Is he making fentanyl? Is he trying to snuff out Christianity? Does he eat dogs? This, it starts out as, I think, him shadowboxing the Democratic Party. And then he veers into shadowboxing the Chinese Communist Party, comes back to Democrats, and then ends with a super racist comment about eating dogs. What I think is getting illustrated in this moment is this affinity for a far-right, white nationalist, authoritarian, government and not a democracy. And that is part of this longer term trend that we've been talking about, you know, since Donald Trump's election, but really since the 2020 election and the attempts to overturn it. You know, like that's where it sort of folds in in a really concerning way. He wants to make it about Biden because it's valuable for him to attack Biden politically. But, you know, the period of time where the left wing media was obsessed with Putin or Russia was during impeachment, which was several years ago. So he's just sort of like got his timeline all messed up. But speaking of timeline, let's go to these, these, these classics here. We've got Sarah Palin. Look it, people are looking at Putin as one who wrestles bears and drills for oil. They look at our president as one who wears mom jeans and equivocates and bloviates. We are not exercising that peace through strength that only th can be brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue. Wow, man, she just really can't talk. You feel bad for her. The Russians, uh, the Communist Party, the KGB, used to have a phrase for people like this who were called useful idiots. This is Sarah Palin regurgitating, quite literally, Russian propaganda. You're excited that the guy wrestled a bear? You don't think it was staged? You're excited by the photos of him, like, riding around on a horse shirtless? You don't think that was staged? Like, it's this Old Spice deodorant ad of what manliness means, masculinity, and what a leader should be <laughs> compared to Obama's mom jeans. Like, look, those jeans, were they offensive? Yes. Should Michelle fucking burn those things in a funeral pyre? Absolutely. That doesn't mean you're a weak or strong leader. Like, Ted Cruz does this too. Basically acts like the US military is weak because, you know, you get asked to use your pronouns or whatever it is, and they hold up the Russian military as some paragon of strength. Well, they don't look particularly strong right now in an actual war against the Ukrainian military, which is um, putting up more of a fight than anyone thought. So maybe we shouldn't, you know, allow this Russian propaganda to infect our brains quite as much, Sarah. Next clip. Putin decides what he wants to do, and he does it in half a day, right? He, went, he decided he had to go to there. Yeah, he's a dictator. Also, it's always good to try to ascertain how drunk Rudy is in these interviews. So far, it seems okay. Go to their parliament, he went to their parliament, he got permission in 15 minutes. Their parliament's not a real parliament, it's a bunch of Putin cronies who do whatever he says. Right. That was kind of like a... <laughs> But he, right? but he makes a decision and he executes it quickly. Then everybody reacts. That's what you call a leader. That's what you call a dictator. Someone who has no checks on his power, 
someone who can invade a country on his whim. It's not a democracy, it's an autocracy. I can sort of see a couple of different flavors of, of Putin love, Putin fetishization. There are the, the Republicans who just like anyone that dislikes Democrats, and they'll just use whatever they can to be critical of whatever Democrats in charge. There are the Republicans who conflate criticism of Russia or criticism of Putin as somehow supporting the impeachment hearings. And that's another sort of flavor of this. And then there are just, there's a strain of Republican in this country that wants a right-wing, conservative, religious, authoritarian leader. Because it takes them back to the good old days in their mind where hyper-religious, super conservative white men were in charge of everything. And that's kind of what Russia looks like. Russia to them is, is the good old days in some weird sense. And that's what comes out. I mean, like a lot of them say it very specifically. I like Putin, he likes Spain. You know, we get along. I do get along with uh, President Putin. President Putin is sharp. Oh, I like Putin. <laughs> President Putin was a total gentleman. Putin called me brilliant. I like it. Putin said Donald Trump is a genius. Putin said good things about me. He said he's a leader and there's no question about it. He's a genius. Putin even sent me a present. Beautiful present with a beautiful note. <laughs> Putin's been a very strong leader. Putin has much better leadership qualities than Obama, but who doesn't know that? I got along great with Putin. And all of a sudden, we have this great friendship. It's Getting so along weird. with Putin and Russia is a great thing. His sort of like Putin fetish is hard to, it's hard to pin down when it started, but it is absurd, it, it is incessant. Although, in fairness to Donald Trump, his affection for authoritarian dictators extends well beyond Putin. He loves Viktor Orban of Hungary, who's very similar, like white, sort of fascistic, super religious, right-wing conservative, but he also likes Kim Jong-un. He had nice things to say about Xi Jinping until he decided to you know, create a China trade war. It's just weird, man. It's just fucking weird. Lauren, how do you say Witsky? I think so. This is an interesting clip. Also, you know, Russia is uh, a Christian nationalist nation. They're actually Orthodox Christian. I'm mm. Russian Orthodox. So, you know, I actually support Putin's right to protect his people and always put his people first, but also protect their Christian values. I identify more with Russian, uh, with Putin's Christian values than I do with Joe Biden. There we go. That's the whole thing. The, the, this Lauren Witsky, person who, thank God, lost her congressional race, prefers Putin's worldview, which is that of a white, extremely conservative autocratic leader to a democratic vision that is inclusive of others, and, and overtly so. Christian nationalist countries also are a threat. This dude's like, fuck. <laughs> you can see his face. He's like, what is this woman saying? This is crazy. To the global uh, regime, like, like the Luciferian regime, it wants to mash everything. To Luciferian regime, what does that mean? What? Fucking literal Bible dinosaurs walking the earth 6,000 years ago. Shit is this person talking about? But Putin takes care of his people. He looks out for- No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't take care of his people. It's a kleptocracy. This woman is a moron. Bannon, okay. We're deep in it now. The, Putin ain't woke. He is anti-woke. The Russians, people still know which bathroom to use. They know how many, how many genders are there in Russia? Two. Okay. That's all of a sudden, that's, that's, that's not- that's not, they don't have the flags. They don't have the pride flags outside on their, on their. They don't have boys swimming in girls' uh, college swim meets. How backward. The amount of time these like grown men spend suddenly focusing on, on women's swimming. It's just amazing. Like talk about working yourself into a fucking lather. These guys like that Putin persecutes gay and trans people and it bothers them that America does not. They are so threatened by people who are different than them that they would rather celebrate Putin and his bigotry and his cruelty towards gays and lesbians than be a part of a democracy. I don't think that that's a huge subset of the Republican Party necessarily, but that is kind of the hardcore MAGA right in where they're going. It's sort of similar to what Madison Cawthorn said today. I don't know if we have that in this, but. Remember that Zelensky is a thumb. Remember that the Ukrainian government is incredibly corrupt and it is incredibly evil and it has been pushing woke ideologies. That is more of a threat to him, the, the woke ideology, whatever that means, than a dictator invading another country, indiscriminately shelling civilians, killing countless people. These people may as well be aliens to me. 
such an identity-driven, hyper-religious, hyper-conservative point of view. I don't understand these people in any way, shape, or form. They do worry me, but I think it's part of a bigger trend that we've seen, which is this sort of like creeping nationalist, authoritarian, white supremacist, white nationalist strain of the Republican Party. And that is very worrisome to me. As disturbing as this is, as embarrassing as this is, the vast, overwhelming majority of the country opposes this Russian invasion, is horrified by it. And I think that the Putin fetish, at least this more modern iteration of it, that isn't just like pretending he's tough because he wrestles a bear, right? Like that's the useful idiot. These folks are individuals who like genuinely don't believe in democracy. Putin called me brilliant, I like it. That was awful, thank you for watching. Let us know what you wanna see next time. We wanna hear from you, we want you to torture me. It's a, it's a nice circular thing where my life gets worse and you guys get to laugh at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>